This is a deep soft tissue mass arising in the thigh of a 40-year-old female. At low power, the lesion is composed of admixed pink and blue areas, giving the tumor a bit of a marbled appearance. The pink areas represent areas of fibrosis, which is variable throughout the lesion. Some areas, like this, are hypocellular with dense, almost hyalinized collagen, while others have more delicate, wispy collagen. Taking a look at the cells themselves, this tumor is composed of small, bland, uniform spindle cells with no real nuclear tibia. They are arranged in a fascicular to story form to vaguely world growth. Moving to a more myxoid area, you can see that the same type of cells are present, although this area is relatively more cellular. A characteristic feature of these areas is the rich vascular network, which is accentuated by just a little bit of perivascular collagen, which you can see right here. This is an example of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, a deceptively bland translocation-associated sarcoma commonly presenting in younger adults as a slow-growing mass in the deep soft tissue of the proximal extremities and trunk. Historically, these were misdiagnosed as benign fibromas, but this was called into question when patients presented years, even decades later, with local recurrences. Even though the name is a bit of a mouthful, I actually like it because it tells you exactly what you're going to get. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma demonstrates strong diffuse positivity for MUC4 by immunohistochemistry, which can be helpful on smaller biopsies. The majority of cases have a characteristic gene fusion between FUS on chromosome 16 and CREB3L2 on chromosome 7. The minority of cases have a FUS-CREB3L1 fusion. Here's an interesting but clinically insignificant morphologic variant of low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma previously called hyalinizing spindle cell tumor with giant rosettes. I'm having issues viewing the digital slide right now, but here are some screenshots I took. As you can see, the name is very descriptive, which I like. There can also be morphologic overlap between low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma and sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma. Although hybrid cases exist, it is more likely to see a case of sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma with a minor low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma component. In addition, pure sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma usually has translocations involving EWSR1 and CREB, either CREB3L1, 3L2, or 3L3. I don't have an example to show, but classically these tumors have a uniformly dense collagenous to hyalinized stroma, and the cells are more rounded than spindled. It looks a bit like this area right here. Sclerosine epithelioid fibrosarcoma arises in a slightly older patient population than low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma and has a more aggressive clinical course. One last thing before we move on. The difference between low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma and myxofibrosarcoma low-grade can be confusing to newer trainees, since it feels like they both are the same terms, just in a different order. However, these two entities can be easily distinguished morphologically. The cells in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma are uniform and bland, which is common in translocation-associated tumors. In contrast, all grades of myxofibrosarcoma are composed of pleomorphic, spindled, and multinucleated cells, with hyperchromatic nuclei and dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. In addition, a low-grade myxofibrosarcoma is much less cellular than a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. The level of cellularity seen in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma would be equivalent to a intermediate to high-grade myxofibrosarcoma. To give you an example, this is a case of myxofibrosarcoma high-grade. As you can see, this is very clearly malignant. I'll cover this entity a bit more in a later video. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. I promise you won't have to wait as long for the next video.